All right, so st- start start the podcast now. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to podcast episode ten. I'm Stacy, and I'm Mari, and please let us know in the chat if our audio levels are equal. Yeah, and we will probably not be able to do anything about it. No, I can I can change it. Um, so what is our first? Oh, my name's Mari. You did that already. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, so. There were a couple of news items. Did you know that Mass Effect is going to have uh, an like an attraction, like roller coaster at Cal- California's Great America amusement park? About, I heard about it. I didn't look too much into it. I didn't know that Mass Effect was. Well, I guess it is that big. I would think they would like do like Halo instead or something. But I guess Mass Effect has more going on for it in terms of an attraction. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, like, necessarily the park. It matters that, like, EA wants to get out in front of it. You know what I mean? Ah. Like, it's not that the park said, hey, let's pick the most popular video game. It matters that EA was like, hey, we should have an amusement park ride. Ah, so that was, like, their most potent. And I think think it's probably, no, I think it's because of Andromeda. Ah, right. So they'll... They'll have the park ride coming out in this summer, and then um, uh, in 2017, supposedly Andromeda will come out. Yeah. Yes. As long as, you know what, as long as I can fuck a Turian, and I can see all the bits, they can do whatever. It could be the worst game ever, and I'd be like, no, 10 out of 10. Yeah. I, saw Alien Dong. I agree. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, I I just want to, like, you know, you just want to be in the world again. Yeah. You know? I, you know, as long as, okay. So there's, honestly, I think they could make an okay game so long as they just made it so the romances were pretty good. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would be fine with it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh and, like, the story could be just, like, whatever, so long as, like, one of them ends up being a cyber god or, like, secretly a reaper. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Um, they're saying that I'm a little louder than you. Okay, I'll, let me just, uh, turn you down a little. Okay, that should fix it. All right. Um, and so I think that it's, the ride is going to be something like, like a 3D movie, you know where it's like you're in the chairs that move. Oh my god! Did you ever go on the alien ride? Yeah. Wait, where like no, I don't. I don't know. I went. I went on that. I went on the alien ride before it was the alien ride. If that makes sense. Because uh, it got turned into the alien ride later. Oh, okay. I know that. Um, <laughs> I know, so I just remember sitting in the chair, and it's, like, all dark, and then, like, the alien gets out, and then it, like, sprays, like, air on the back of your necks that yeah, you yeah, think yeah, it's, yeah. like, right behind you. That was the one. I went to it before it was the alien. It, oh, my it was God. Like, it was an alien, but it wasn't a xenomorph. Yeah. So, like, they changed how it looked, but I, I that scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, because I was too, I was... Young and I knew that it wasn't real, but I was young enough to still not be able to separate it to really know that it wasn't real, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of like rides like that because it's like, even though you know it's not real, you can kind of forget that it's not real for a second. Now that I'm older, I'm, the thing about haunted houses though is that I'm always convinced that there's a real serial killer in there because I'm like, you know, if there if there was a real serial killer, they could just go into the haunted house and kill people and they'd be and they could just kill people in front of other people and they'd be like, "Oh, what a realistic haunted house." I'm and not then, a huge fan of haunted houses just because like I've seen too many movies where like something goes wrong and people actually die. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Where you're in, you know, you're in one of those extreme haunted houses, you know, mm-hmm. where like 
and it's like, oh my god, you signed a contract so they can grab you, and I'm like, no, dude, because that's where a real serial killer would infiltrate the motherfucking place and kill people for real in there, and then other people would walk by and go, wow, this, like, haunted house is so realistic. <laughs> you would be dead, and you would be screaming for help, and they'd all be like, ha, 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 and walk off. Yeah. And Or just, like, just you'd be straight up murdered, and nothing you can do would change anything that happens. But so. I've heard about that really, really, really intense haunted house where people in Vegas bet on if peop- on how long people will last through it. Yes. The what I forget what it's called. Do you remember what it's called? No, but I just know that there's like a really intense one where like they make you sign a contract that basically says like if you die, it's not our fault. They straight up kidnap people. Yeah. Uh, and like, I mean. I can understand, like, why some people would like that, but I'm okay. Oh, uh, it's the McCamey Manor, and, like, there's one where they have, like, people just walk on through where they sign a contract and they'll do fucked up shit, and then there's one, this is the one that they bet on, where <laughs> people sign a contract, they pick you up by the side of the road, throw you in a van, and verbally abuse you, and then... They, this is all consensual by the people, but they have to tell you to stop at a certain point. It's like, wow. you know, safe word shit. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, like, people will pass out because they are voluntarily being, like, psychologically tortured and stuff. Yeah. It's really messed up. And it's really, like, what? Like, oh, people my are God. Like, oh, yeah, I can do it, blah, 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 like, five minutes in, they're crying and having a panic attack. <laughs> that would be, see, I wouldn't even sign up for something like that. That's just not, it's not for me. I was watching videos of it because, you know, I'm, I'm a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> and now uh, I bet you're going to watch videos of it later, being like, nope. oh. No. <laughs> I like I like horror movies where it's like, I don't know, I like really fucked up horror movies. Like, I, I don't know, I like body mutilation horror, horror, which they would never do that to real people, hopefully. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. I like movies like Hellraiser and stuff, but I don't like movies like Hostel, where it's like I'm empathizing with the person, mm-hmm. you know? I like movies like the original thing, where like bodies are like being ripped apart, but it's like an alien, and then people die like relatively quickly, but I don't like torture porn, if that mm. makes sense. Yep. Torture porn. I don't like torture porn, but I like things like Hellraiser where they're like, I'm kind of into it, but it's weird. And uh, Welcome to the Geek Remix Podcast. We're leading with torture porn. (laughs) (laughs) I wanna be I wanna make sure that people are being horribly tortured but they're into it. No, I don't like it when I don't like uh, like saw and stuff because I just feel bad for everybody. It makes me sad. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, that Uh, makes sense. I think you're supposed to feel bad. No, people who like Saw and Hostel and stuff, they just watch it for the gore and they think it's like, I don't know, funny or something. I don't, it's not my kind of thing. I like it when it's just like straight up gore and then, you know, they die. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because that's like further from reality, I think, in my opinion. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Yeah, and I think that I think the ones that are like mo- like the more realistic it is that it could happen, you know, cuz you know how like in so many horror movies they they talk about this where it's like if the characters make decisions that you wouldn't make in those situations, it's less then scary. Yeah. It's less scary because you're just like, "Oh, well that person's an idiot," you know. It's kind of like when we watched 50 Shades of Grey and the character is like making so many just being such an idiot that you're like, well, this isn't sexy because it just, like, it takes you right out of it. Yeah, you know, I don't, here's, I don't like prolonged suffering. Like, I didn't like the human centipede just because it was just, like. Oh, God. It was just, it was just horrible. Just horrible <laughs> prolonged suffering where it wasn't funny to me. I was just felt sad mm-hmm. and un- upset. But things like, uh, it's, I like monster movies, like, uh. Uh, Nightbreed was a good one where it's like an underground civilization of demons and they're all like weirdly shaped and stuff and like they Mm -hmm. all have like like some of them have no skin on their face but that's just the way they are so they're like fine 
<laughs> you know? That's just the way you are. You have to just accept people as they are. Yeah, exactly. Moral of the story. Exactly. So it's like some guy has, like, ripped off the skin on his head, but he was, like, cool with it, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what I like, where it's like, no, I'm, I'm totally fine with being ripped in half because I'm a <laughs> demon, you know? <laughs> I like monsters and stuff, but I don't yeah. like it when people are, like, suffering, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of other movies that are coming out, I don't know if you heard, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is going to be playing Edward Snowden. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. So I watched the trailer for the movie, and... You know, it, that's good because I think a lot of people... Aren't really... Even, yeah, even me, like, I feel like I have a grasp on what that means, but I don't, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I feel like, you know, they did, um, who was it? I think it was John Oliver did, like, street interviews with a bunch of people to see, like, if people knew who Edward Snowden was and, like, what he did and all that. And a lot of people actually, like, had no clue who he was or, like, what the whole... Uh, like, situation was, like, why, you know, he, like, fled the country and everything. Um, I think that the movie could be good in the sense that it reveals, like, that it shows people, like, hey, there was, like, an actual reason why this all happened. But at the same time, um, the trailer makes it very, very, like, I don't know, obviously, because I wasn't there, I don't know how true to life it's going to be. Because they they make it look like it's like this action spy thriller type thing. Maybe you know? it was though, you know. I, that's the thing is we don't know. <laughs> like when you know he did literally have to like flee the country and he lives in Russia. Russia, or whatever. yeah. So maybe. Well, you know what? Like you know how uh, a lot of trailers are super misleading. Where mm-hmm. they'll be like, "Oh, this is a crime. This is a war drama about very depressed, like." men who are fighting in Afghanistan, but the trailer will be like, yeah, guns, bush, 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 bush. But then when you watch the movie, it's not anything like that. Mm-hmm. It'll be, I hope, hopefully it's like that, but maybe not. Yeah. It's, I, I think that it could be good because it'll show people what, like, the reasons why he did what he did. Because I think a lot of people still look at it as, you know, oh, well, whatever his reasons were, like, he, sh- he still shouldn't have, like, leaked all the documents and whatnot. Um, yeah, some and- people, my opinion might be different than people listening, but I feel like sometimes people, because of the movies and stuff, with like, superheroes doing what's best for us and shit, it's like, well, the government knows what's best for us, and I'm like... Okay, you know, it's good to to believe in your government, and I'm not trying to sound like a crazy conspiracist, but sometimes, you know, it's okay to question the government yeah. and be like, what the fuck, Well, it's, this, it's the same thing with, you know, your parents raise you, and sometimes they're right about some things, but as you get older, you come to realize, hey, they're not right about everything. They're human beings just like everybody else, and the government is a collection of human beings, and so... Sometimes there are going to be things that you agree with them about. It doesn't necessarily boil down to just, like, right or wrong. Sometimes they're going to do things that you agree with, and sometimes they won't, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. They're just, they're people. Um, And the government has its own priorities, and sometimes they won't match up with what everybody wants. You know, the, the U.S. has, like, over 300 million people in it, so there are bound to be at least a couple million people that disagree with the government at any one point, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think it'll be interesting. They, there were a couple parts of it, though, that just made him seem like, um, Jason I, I don't want Warren or something. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, that made it seem like, oh, my God, like, he's a hero. And at the same time, I was kind of like, all right, well, He's a nerd, you know. He's he's not he's Jason cute. Bourne. He's a cute, cute nerd. Yeah, I'm he's not cute. saying that there's anything wrong with being a nerd, but at the same time, it's like if somebody, like if they did a movie about my life and made me look like, you know, a supermodel, that would, you okay, know. Okay, well, let's be fair, Stacey. You you are a mo- you you 
did model. You know what okay? I'm trying to say, you know? If they made me some sort of tall model, and I'm like, you are, were? You were or a tall they, model? Say if they made me... Model? Say if they made me like a piano virtuoso or something, okay. like something that I actually did, but was not like the best at it. That was just a very bad example. Well, I was <laughs> trying to like something that would be like really cool. I I don't know. Or I mean, uh, well, whatever. We're moving on. <laughs> um, there's going to be a Rocky Horror Show game. Oh, that's interesting. When? Yeah, so it's a mobile game Kickstarter oh. that started. And I was like, well, we can let's play that. It's not. It's not for the. Okay, so there's the. It's based on the original musical theater show rather than the Rocky Horror Picture Show film. Oh, okay. Well, so I don't know exactly what those differences are. Okay. I'm. But I'm gathering it has something to do with you, like, being in the theater and whatnot. I, I want to – actually, this has been out for a few days. I want to see if this has been funded. Link it in the chat. Uh, okay. I'm, like – I'm going between uh, two computers. She's hacking, guys. Yes. Well, I don't have two monitors, so I always just use both computers. One day. One day we'll have an office or something. Then Well, I have the room. I can, I'll can. i be able to use it. I just have to, like, One I don't day know. we'll find some other Chicago Let's Players or whatever. We'll have an office together. Yeah. Our spouses will just leave us the fuck alone. I know. And we can record any day we want, and we don't have to worry about going around their work schedules. Oh, on a total side note, I know that I told you about this this morning, but for anybody listening, so what the actor from Contradiction who played Ryan, who was the cult leader, who we made fun of and who we made fun of in the game, he tweeted at me this morning. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem with live action games cuz usually you can make fun of video game characters all you want cuz they're not real. But then he was like, "Hey, well, we did say that his face was not suitable for love. Wait, we said that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Because that's... Not okay. suitable for love. I don't know. Was that something... Was that some, which one of us said that? <laughs> I don't know if that's, like, the exact words that we used, but when he tweeted me, he was like, Hey, I'm watching walkthroughs of Contradiction and wondering why my face is not suitable for loving. Looking at you, Geek Remix, and Geek Remix a lot. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I would never say that. This face is not suitable for love. What? No, I. we must have said, like, something to that effect. Um, I just remember being like, really? All these women are falling for this dude? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what he pointed out, that there were other people that said that, too. And then... <laughs> Yeah, and especially we were like, I guess we were like, really? Uh, maybe he has an attractive personality. <laughs> well, he and, was a cult leader, so. Uh, and then there was just a bunch of other, like, funny stuff. If you guys, if anybody wants to go read that conversation, I retweeted the tweet on my profile, and it'll pull up the whole conversation if you click on it. <laughs> um, I also pointed out that he was basically drinking the entire in every shot <laughs> so remember because he had like a glass of whiskey and he literally drank like every time you talk to him yeah and he never drank it yeah but it yeah and like the yeah it was funny <sighs> um i wonder what else, how, do you know if he's had anything else Is oh so else? you know i actually looked there's um this game that is coming out later this year that he is a voice in it's called the val it's called valley i think mm -hmm. um and it's basically about where i watched the trailer and it's coming out this summer you basically are kind of like a super soldier in this like special exoskeleton suit and you get to like run around this valley and you control life and death but there are consequences to controlling life and death, and 
it seems like there's some sort of like supernatural element. This sounds fucking rad. It does look really rad. It does look really cool. I don't know how much of a story there is. Who cares, man? As long as it, it gives me a guilt trip for using the power of life and death, man. Yeah, no, I need to find this because... Where is it? I, I, because I looked at it and I was like, wow, that actually looks really cool. Um, hold on, I want to find it because I want to put it in the chat. Valley of the game. Okay. All right. Now you guys can go check it out too. So the website, if anybody listening wants to check it out, is valleythegame.com. And there you can view like the trailer and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it looks pretty cool. Um, what? I was going to say something and now I forgot. Damn it. Okay. Go on. Move uh, on to the next thing. Did you hear about YouTube's content ID system? The update? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. Uh, I feel like they took the one suggestion that I always thought was not the problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to explain it or do you want me to? Um, you can go ahead and explain it. So what they were like, everyone was always saying like, oh, when somebody does a content ID claim, uh, they get all the money for when they're claiming it. So even if it's a false claim, they get to have money, blah, 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 blah. And so a lot of people were scamming and stuff do, using that faulty system thing. And so now whenever someone makes a claim, it gets put into a pot where no one gets the money until the claim is satisfied. And then once the claim is done, then you get the money for whoever wins the claim. To the victor goes the spoils. But basically yeah. the difference is that, yeah, because what used to happen before was that like people could just make claims and get money whether the claim was, was valid. valid or not and they would just keep whatever money came in while the claim was going on. What makes me worried is that now people who do that scam are just going to never give up because there's nothing. There's nothing that can like do that, yeah. you know. Mhm. Mm and um I feel like this I mean it's like <laughs> one small step. Yeah. But there's I so just, many other things that they need to fix. Exactly. That's that's my concern. There's just the fact that people can just make claims. And, like, I have one video where it's, like, you know, Amethyst talking backwards, and it's definitely 100% of transformative work. And it got auto-claimed, and I disputed it, and I won. And then it got manually claimed. And I disputed it, and they won't let me have it. And I'm just like, and yeah. then if I dispute it after they deny it, that means it puts the channel at risk for a strike, which means we can't monetize any videos at all for all of our videos. So it's like, yeah. I'm not going to take that risk, but it's like totally puts me in this position where I just got to go, I guess, fine. Just take my shit, I guess. Yeah. So somebody in the chat was bringing up that, I don't know if you heard about this, Mari, but Jim Sterling's workaround for that. And so what Jim Sterling does is basically, but the difference with what he does is his videos for the Jimquisition aren't monetized. So what he does... via his Patreon, so yes. he doesn't want to make it so his viewers have to see ads after the, they pay for it. Yes. So what he'll do is he'll just put a bunch of footage in there that he knows will get claimed. And so if multiple companies claim it, then nobody gets the money. Yeah, that's uh, I've seen that happen before on some of our Let's Plays. I'm just yeah. like, wow, like everybody's just right on this, huh? <laughs> yeah, but if but if multiple companies claim it, they can't split the monetization. So then nobody gets money, um, which is like okay, I guess, if you don't want to work, like, if you don't want to make any money off of it, but we do support our channel with that advertising revenue, so that's not really an option for us. It's If you really want people to go fuck themselves, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you know something's going to get claimed for bullshit reasons, then yeah, but the thing with us, it's like, if something gets claimed it just sucks <laughs> yeah and you know I think what is I, I can it doesn't bother me as much if it's like a company that has like a legit claim to it 
Oh, yeah, definitely. But if it's, like, these rando companies that are like, oh, yeah, we totally own this footage of this game that's not ours. Ex- oh, okay, so when other networks have their gaming channels upload their things by mistake, Ugh, I'm God. just like, can you fix your shit? Like, they're always like, it's a mistake, it's a mistake. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't, yeah, I don't care I don't if, care it's, a if it's a mistake. Stop doing it. Like, why should I give a shit? It's like, oh, well, I didn't mean to trip you over. Like, still say sorry, though, you know? Yeah. You shouldn't have done it. I didn't mean to crash my car into you. Okay. But you still should pay my medical bills. Like, so what? I don't care. Yeah. Well, and the reason why that's that was, like, so additionally bullshit is because even if they said sorry, they still took the money. Mm-hmm. So it didn't and matter. It, and it, what really pissed me off is that the company is always – talk to me like I was the asshole. And I'm like, I'm not the asshole. You're the asshole. Okay? I'm yeah. sorry that I was like, hey, you shit on the floor. Don't shit on the floor. And they're like, how can you point out that I shit on the floor? It wasn't on purpose. And I'm like, okay, but can, can you clean it up? No. I will not clean up the shit that I shit on the floor. How dare you? <laughs> it was an accident. I'm like, I'm not going to clean up your poop. No, you're going to clean up my poop. No, I don't want to clean up your poop. How dare you point out that I shit on the floor? Content ID literally is shitting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you hear that Alicia Vikander will play Lara Croft in the new Tomb Raider movies? Uh, who is Alicia Vikander? I will tell you. So she was the she played the android in Ex Machina, and she oh, also hell won. Yeah, yeah, and she won an Oscar for her role in The Danish Girl. Oh. So, I, did you see Ex Machina? Yeah. The first half, I was like, fuck, fuck this movie. I, but it gets fuck better, this. right? And, and, then, and then I was like, <laughs> like yeah, so, like laughing to myself. Like, I, was, <laughs> I, was t- I was trying to tell you, like, when you were like, oh, no, like, I, you know, I don't want to see a movie because it's going to be, and I was like, okay, but you just have to watch it and just, you know, just watch it and wait for the end. I don't want to spoil it because uh, some people in the comments haven't seen it. But it's okay. it's really good. In general, I find it very frustrating to watch movies where the robot or artificial intelligence is a woman and then a guy falls in love with it or, like, has some sort of sentimental feelings for it because it just feels so, like... Hello, this is a story for a lonely-ass nerd. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Lonely-ass straight guy nerd. Like, the movie Her, I know on every level, is a good movie. It's well-paced, good story, has character development, but the whole time I'm, like, so annoyed by it because I'm just like, okay. Okay. Great. Like, fucking, she's created to perfectly you know, fit his personality and, oh, he fell in love. Uh, Great. Like, (laughs) so annoying. Um, But I think that, I, you know, I think that she will do a good job. I'm excited. She's a really good actress. I just, like, I am hoping against everything that the movies are not bad. You know, I saw Laura Croft when I was pretty young, so I remember liking them, but I don't know. I haven't seen them recently. I remember that was something that really boosted, uh, what's her name's, her Angelina Jolie's career. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: is that like I. I feel like I'm pretty lucky in how I view things like that because I can enjoy a movie that's not amazing, you know? Like, I can enjoy things for what they are, and there's plenty of movies where, like, if there's a superhero in it, and maybe the movie's not that great, like, I still enjoy it because I like the superhero, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think as long as it wasn't, like, super, super cringeworthy, then... I would still enjoy it because I would just be really happy to see Laura Croft, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying is that my bar is pretty low. <laughs> As long as it's not made by you, you ball, you're fine. Yeah, just as long as it's not like so incredibly god awful, then I I can deal with it. I remember, for some reason, I really remember those movies being the shit, and I really think okay. So the be- the movies, the video game movies that do the best, always have female protagonists, even if the main series didn't have a female protagonist. Well, I you know isn't that like. I know that some people, I know that um, Resident Evil, it's supposedly not a great movie, but I love that movie. I love that movie, too, and it did really well. It's not a technically good movie. It's just a cool movie, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? definitely. I know it's not good. I know that. <laughs> we all know it. It's just good. It's just It's just a good time for everybody. <laughs> I liked it with the lasers. It's so stupid. Yeah. But, like, uh, and I know that Silent Hill fans were not a fan of the movie, but I was. I, I enjoyed it. it, too. I enjoyed it as well. And, uh, you know, I like that it was, uh, I know that it's not kosher to change the story because they made the father the second the the backup character and the mother took the place of what the father father story was but you know what I had a good time but what I'm trying to say is if the video game mo- movie franchises that do the best are the ones where they like put a leading lady in it how come like they don't do that in video games where they're like wait a second I'm noticing a pattern here you know mm hmm yeah, I think that your mic is a lot quieter. Huh. That's what they're saying. Is this better? You say something real quick. Okay, I am talking. Blah, blah, blah. Um, what else? So, I'm sure that... Have you heard anything else about... Uh, uh, I almost said Life is Strange... Don't Nod's new v- vampire. Uh, I know that it takes place in, uh, whatever, in during the Spanish flu. Yeah. And it's vampires and stuff. And everyone's like, it's going to be darker than Life is Strange. I'm like, I get that it's going to be darker, but sometimes I'm like, what game did you guys play? Where Life is Strange was not dark right off the bat. They're like, why can't it be like episode one where it was a slice of life happy thing? I was like, are you talking, what game did you play? At the end of the, at the end of the episode, Chloe talks about how she got drugged and Kate's being horribly, and then they're talking about a missing dead girl. What game did you play? I mean, I think that, I don't know if people thought it wasn't dark just because, like, the literal color scheme wasn't dark. So they just got tricked? They're like, so they were just like, no, this is like a happy high school caper with two girls that fall in love. That's the game I played. And then, like, some people see Chloe get smacked in the face by her stepfather and, like, all this really dark shit. And everyone's like, no, it was a slice of life happy game. I'm like, did you... What 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 do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that game is. I don't know if it's just supposed to be like more death and blood and grit. I really don't know. Um, I feel like uh, more death and blood and grit can sometimes not be as dark because then it just goes like, oh, okay, so everyone's you know dead, whatever, blah blah blah. I hope they... it doesn't do the whole like. Walking Dead Game of Thrones thing where it's like, oh, you never know who's going to die. So blah, blah, blah. I feel like at this point with the, you know, at first you know, it was shocking. Like, oh, everyone you care about dies and blah. But now I think that this has been so overdone. It takes the value of characters and the weight of their death away if everybody dies all the time, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. I would like to have a little bit more going on. Yeah. I don't know. I just for me as much as as much as I can appreciate that characters can die and I like that sometimes 
sometimes I also just want to play a narrative like that is set up the way it is. But you remember, I mean? okay, Life is Strange spoilers, how much more it meant that Rachel was dead in the context of a reality where death was realistic. Yes. Because when you play Game of, when you watch Game of Thrones or whatever, or you're playing The Walking Dead and everyone's dying, you're like, ah! But in the context of a more realistic setting in terms of who's dying, her death meant so much more and it felt so much deeper because in life... You know, people die all the time, but it's not like every day, every other second. Yeah, it's not like it's not usually it. Death doesn't usually follow one person around in the way that it does in a Telltale game. Yeah. So I just it feels a lot more powerful when people you care about die, and it's not constantly all the time. I just want to keep spamming my face in the chat just so everybody knows how cool I am. They've seen it, Stacey. <laughs> I know, but um, I am I am excited to see this new game. I'm wondering, I don't know, I'm very curious to see what it'll be like, and I'm hoping that it doesn't end up looking like a Telltale game. That's like, that's all I really want. You, you know? know what, I really don't think they're going to do that because... I don't think they will either, but I just, you know. Because they're in France, and for some reason, France equals fuck authority, so they're going to do the opposite of everything. Yeah. I I have a, uh, I have faith that they will um, not even try to emulate what Life is Strange was about, you know what I mean? They'll try to f move away from that, too, and mm -hmm. I look forward to that. But I would like to have gay vampires. Oh, that'd be so great. Yeah. That'd be so uh, nice. I wonder what kind of... Do you think it's going to be episodic? Do you do you know anything? Uh, I don't... You know, I don't know. I found this, like, big, long article about it. Here, I'll put it in the chat. Because if, if people want to read about it... I didn't read the whole thing. But if you, that way, if people are curious, they can read they more. They seem to be very pro-episodic games in all of their conferences and stuff, so I think it's going to be episodic. What I want to know is, like, can, am I going to be a gam gay vampire? I would, like, I really wouldn't mind playing as a guy after, you know, experiencing Life is Strange. Like, but I would really like to be a gay vampire. I would really want to see what their... Uh, depiction of being a gay male would be you know i i'm kind of wondering how you would fit a romance in there for vampires i mean not for not just that but like i, I guess it just depends on the story that you want to tell in my personal experience with vampire things like vampires are super gay because one of the most popular vampire stories is interview with a vampire and that's oh yeah gay. and they're yeah they're super gay and well, there's some other ones that are super gay and i feel like vampire stories open up a lot of possibilities for gender and sexuality diversity in my opinion well i i mean i just think it's because well and this is just like my personal feeling like if you're a lie if you're gonna be spending the rest of your eternity, why on earth would you limit, like, your sexuality, you know? I don't know. I just, I, I just feel like they get their, like, not limited, but um, that they don't, um, they're not you, hung up yeah. on the same things that we are, as exactly. you know? You just, just do whatever you want. Uh, I A lot of vampire stories have a lot of uh, gender fluid or trans vampire people just because vampires are people you know they're vampires they can do yeah. whatever they want and they don't like vampire societies like uh whatever as long as you're eating blood who cares mm -hmm. and not breaking this one specific rule that we have about being vampires you can do whatever you want yeah like they already eat people like what else like what, what other else could they yeah <laughs> i know, you know? Um, so something else that I know that you had wanted to talk about, I wasn't sure if you still wanted to, was uh, Crunch Time. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
So even today, there are a lot of companies that have crunch time. And in case you don't know, crunch time is this period of time that can be up to a year before a game releases where a game developer studio expects their employees to put in tons and tons of time. And the reason they are able to do this is because jobs in the game industry are perceived as very valuable because a lot of people want to be in it, but it's very difficult to get into. Mm-hmm. Because that's it's kind of like the movie industry in the early days where people, they oh, you have all these very young passionate people who really want to make it because they love video games and this has been their dream their whole life so they're willing to work until they drop you know what other industry also has that same type of attitude which one is the fashion industry oh yeah a lot of people really want to get into it but it's like very difficult to get into so they'll often have like internships but they treat the interns like garbage pay them nothing and that's one of the reasons why you end up with a lot of like people from richer or more wealthy families in the fashion industry because the only people who can afford to take a year long unpaid internship is somebody who already has the money to support themselves in New York of all places. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's pretty much exploiting someone's dream and they know that they're doing that. And it's fucked up. So I don't know if you guys, I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to read here. I'll put it on the screen so we can all just go on this panic attack together. Um, Stacey, had you gone through it yet? Or because I just want to see if your reactions are going to be fresh. (laughs) Gone through what? Uh... That, what that guy says, Lewis. Oh, I, I didn't want to read that. That's just like, why would I read that? <laughs> because you it's know? so weird. But like, I know you posted parts of it on your Twitter and I just like, I just wasn't interested. It's if like, this was a, if this was just some guy, if this was just some guy, I wouldn't care as nearly as much. But the problem I have with it is that he's an industry leader and these are real things that people in the industry think. And that's why I think it's it's something that needs to be discussed because he has a lot of sexist things he says and a lot of ableist things that he says. And I didn't... <sighs> What's his name? St. Alex, John? Alex St. John. So it's, it's not like he's just some guy, you know, like where it's like Rouge Vaughn or whatever his name was. And he's just like some guy. <laughs> and uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, my God. No, I'm only seeing the drama parts. I want to. Yeah, I this is like. It what it may have started out as just like he wrote an article, but it's like then it turned into just like everybody had to comment about it. And it wasn't like, an article; it was a presentation at a games conference. They said it was an article. Mm, no, here he might have wrote written an article also. Here, I, I will put it on screen. Add window capture. All right, recruiting, training, and training and retaining giants. State of the market, rapid turn in employees, blah, blah, blah. Who are you really cr- recruiting and retaining? Rule one, you don't recruit and retain male engineers. You recruit and retain wives and, gr- and girlfriends. These are things, this is like, he, oh no, God. he's an industry leader, Stacy. This isn't like some guy who has a small company. He's, like, a millionaire, and this is the shit that he was telling people at a games conference about game development. Oh, my God. If the wife or GF... This is just, like... If the wife or GF is unhappy, the engineer is gone. If the relationship breaks down, the engineer is gone. The paycheck goes to her. Why does she want her husband or BF to work for you? It's like he's trying to respect a relationship, but making it seem like... Women women get money. What? <laughs> First of all, a lot of 
even married people have separate financial situations because they want to be independent. But whatever. Coding is never work. It's a calling because coding is the calling. What? Yeah, uh, I th I'm not even like interested in this because it's just like this is, you know. I mean, I know that he's like an industry person, but this reads like some weirdo's manifesto. You know. That's what the problem is. That's I know that's what the problem is. is, but it's like why why give it more? You know. Because in my opinion. The reason why I want to draw attention to this is because this is the way of thinking of a lot of people's bosses. Yeah. That's why I want to draw attention to it. Because even though it sounds ridiculous, this is the type of attitude a lot of people's bosses who work in the industry actually think. And it's not a joke. It sounds ridiculous, but it's not a joke. This is what people actually have to deal with all mm -hmm. the time. And that's why I feel like it's important to bring up and for people to be like, oh, no, it's not really like that. It's not really going to be like that, but it is for me. That's my, that's how I feel. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Have, is this, no. What? I was what trying to see if this is like his actual blog. Oh my it God. is. No, I'm looking at, oh, dear Lord. I like, I, it's like, I don't even want to click on this stuff because it just like gives him traffic and attention. You know, real engineers don't value money. They value their relationships and their achievements. And he says all these things and it's just really terrible. And the thing that really gets to me is because everyone's like, it's so ridiculous. And I'm like, yeah, it is. This is somebody's boss. This is how other people's bosses think in the industry. Like, it's not a joke. These people have to go to work and deal with this type of guy as their boss who doesn't understand that it's not them who's the problem, you know? Yeah. They have to work under somebody who thinks like this, that thinks that they can just burn somebody down until they're nothing and be like, oh, you should enjoy being here because it's your passion and stuff. It, I think it, there are a lot of bosses in a lot of industries that feel that way. Yeah, that's true. I'm I not saying that that makes it that any better. Is... I'm not saying it makes it any better, but I'm saying, like, that's why this, like, almost doesn't surprise me, just because of, like, I don't know. I've, having worked in the business world for a few years, it's like you, you get to see uh, how a lot of companies work from, like, the back end, and it's just, like, they're a mess. They're run by a bunch of people that are a mess, and they treat people like garbage, and it's just, uh, you know? I just, and I just want to point out something that he says, and this is a guy who hires other people and who consults other people, is that, I like, don't even want to repeat it, but he says, the undisco undiscovered, this is not my opinion, the undiscovered Asperger's engineer usually found on open source forums. They have no social skills, which is not true for a lot of people with Asperger's, and if it is true, that's fine. They generally marry the first girl they date, which is oh, so God. fucked up. They can't make eye contact, and I'm like, hey guys, I can't make eye contact either, and I don't have Asperger's syndrome. Uh... I actually just got diagnosed with OCD, and that's why I don't make eye contact. But anyway, that's a rude thing to say. There's a lot of people with Asperger's who can and other people who can't, and that's fine. Uh, resume and educational background is a mess because they've not so, – like, he says all these things on how to find somebody with undiagnosed Asperger's and, and so that he can take advantage of them. And it's so messed up. Yeah. And it's like – if he was literally no, but if he was somebody who just like owned like a small indie company, I'd be like, wow, what a loser. But he makes major software, still does, and I just don't understand. Like, what? What does he? He made DirectX and some other things, and DirectX is the base software for a lot of the games that were out like uh, a few years ago. And some other things, and he still works in some um, places. Uh, 
Yeah, he founded Wild Tangent, whatever that is. It just... It just frustrates me because it's just... <sighs> That's so predatory, in my opinion, to say something like that. And to believe something like that when you're trying to hire somebody, you know? Mm-hmm. But anyway... I feel you know, like... I feel like I don't get as, like, upset about this stuff as any more as you do because I've just come to believe that all people are terrible. I can believe that all people are terrible, but I'm still going to have my standards of what is okay yeah. for people. You know, I guess you, don't, just... you don't need to feel the same way I do, of course. I just... No. I just... I... It... You know, it's like instead of being like, oh my gosh, like how could people be this way? For me, it's just like, it just like confirms what I always believed, that people are awful, you know? I, it, I just, I, feel, I, I guess I just have a much more jaded worldview, you know? I just don't want to come to be expected and then not say anything when I'm like, oh, what an asshole. And then I just go like, okay, I don't want to, I just don't. I, I want to point this out and be like, this isn't okay. Like, I think it's fucked up, and you should be called out for it, and he has been called out. I just want people to realize that people who are trying to get into the games industry and co going in as, you know, an entry-level job as a coder, this is the type of hiring tactic, and this is the type of boss that people have, and it should be noticed and, uh, you know, the last time somebody quote-unquote whistleblowed on this, uh, there were changes in the industry. So I really feel like bringing attention to this can make a difference because staying silent, I feel like bringing attention to these types of things does make a difference if you try. Yeah. You know? I mean... I guess the one thing that I would say is that even though this type of stuff, like, happens a lot, that you don't have to put up with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if your boss treats you like this or says any of these types of things to you, like, just, I, don't even give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? If somebody is being, like, a scumbag, this is, it's the same thing when people talk about how, you know, like when, uh, I'll use this as an example, they're not the same thing, but like, say with like street harassment, right, of women, mm -hmm. I'm used to it, it happens all the time, and I just kind of blow it off, but at the same time, does that mean that I should, like, it, that I should accept it, and come to just be like, oh yeah, it's fine, because it happens all the time, no, you know? Like, I'm still allowed to be pissed off at it, just be even though it's kind of, like, a fact of life. If that makes sense. No, I'm, I'm hearing you. Yeah, like, I hate it when people use the argument, like, oh, well, you should just expect it, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, just because it's to be expected doesn't mean that we can't be pissed off about it, you know? And here, sorry, to, okay, I'm going to go off on a side thing where guys will give advice on how to deal with it, where they're like, why don't you just tell him you're not interested? Why don't you do this? And I'm like, because he's a stranger and he's huge and you don't know what they're going to do. Because I don't, I don't think guys know this because a lot of – most guys are normal human beings who have rational responses to things. Yeah. And they're not used to re dealing with guys who are very insecure. Who don't. Self, who don't. So, like, 99% of men – normal human beings who are rational and then the one percent of of men who are not are the ones who do street harassment so if you turn back and give them sass they're not going to handle that rejection well and you don't no. know what they'll do yeah yeah so it's yeah i think it's like it kind of shows a lack of understanding and empathy to tell somebody to like fight back against street harassment or against like any Anything. type of any type yeah. of hate, you know, like if somebody's being homophobic or like yelling at you on the street, if that person's already willing to yell at you on the street, you don't fucking know what else they're going to do. Exactly. Why on, why on earth would you want to invite more attention to yourself? I mean, at least that's how I feel. And also, like, you know, sometimes you're fucking tired and you don't have the energy or whatever, you know. So, and also, 
if you're for these people who are young and in these industries they don't they don't know if they can fight back but also if somebody is giving you shit one thing when my friend did when he was a kid if a teacher was being really mean to him and nobody believed him so he put a recorder in his pocket and recorded her being mean and then played it for his parents oh shit so anyway, if you have a smartphone, you can get one of those like low key recording things. If some, if like a teacher is being like straight up, if somebody in authority is giving you shit, and you don't think anyone's gonna believe you, you can record them. It's legal. Yeah. Agreed. As long as it's not in their house. But yeah. even if it is, like, if you're a kid. You know, but most of the time, even if you feel like no one's gonna believe you, probably somebody will believe you. Uh, if something bad is happening to you, please tell somebody that's that you think can help you. Yeah. Sorry, it got a little dark, but yeah, what I'm got a little is, dark. <laughs> <laughs> um. uh, uh, if you are being harassed at work, tell HR. Uh, you don't have to suffer in silence. You know, sometimes it'll feel like nobody's gonna believe you, but then. It, it, most of the time people will believe you and if they don't I would them. say even if you feel like people aren't going to believe you always try yeah. and if no one believes you then go from there but you should always try you know because if you don't say anything then there's no chance yeah um anyways on to also something also keep a document document whenever uh, an occurrence of, of like harassment happens. Yes. Yeah, because if you have like dates and times, or like say if you if if a boss sends you like a fucked up email and you save it, things like that. Yeah, print it out and also keep it saved on like in a folder. Like do both. Yeah. So. Anyways. Um... Sorry. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, actually. So, did I tell you that I, I pre-ordered two action figures? What would you get? I got... People who follow me on Twitter might know this, but I got the Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Cloud. Mm-hmm. And I got Fran from Final Fantasy XII. Oh, shit. Those are, they're coming out? Yeah. So, they're do li- you- What? Go ahead. They're, like, 11-inch tall action figures. Do you know anything else about uh, what's going on with Final Fantasy XV? I mean, they're not oh. actually brothers, right? It's about brotherhood, right? It's about brotherhood. They're not okay. actually brothers. Okay, so then they're... I can ship them, right? So yeah. Whole... Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to feel bad? <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't have to feel bad. So what it is is um, Noctis, who's the main character, grows up with his his bodyguard is the big guy, Gladiolus, I believe his name is. And then there's... Yeah, um, and then there's his advisor type guy. I don't remember his name. He's the one with the glasses. And then Pronto is his like best friend, like lighthearted kind of guy. As you can see, I've I've, I've read a lot everything. about it. Wait, so I have a question. So for the story of the game, so one guy is a prince. Yes, he's a prince, and he's and they're t- and they're driving around in a car. He's a, okay, so he's a prince, and he's in, like, betrothed, I think the word is. Um, is that the story of the anime or the game? That's the, that's the story in the anime and the game. Okay. So, there, he's betrothed to Luna Freya, I think, which is the girl in the neighboring kingdom. She's also in the game. And, uh, I think... I don't know exactly what the whole story is going to be in the game, but I think they basically, like, something happens in his kingdom, and so then he has to go to the neighboring kingdom to find her. So does he like her, or are they just betrothed? I'm not sure. Yes, and so somebody pointing out in the comments, Noctis is the crown prince of Lucis, and his journey is to go marry Luna Freya. So he's going on a, a road trip to the neighboring kingdom. Well, how would you prefer they get there, Walk? Well, no, I'm, I'm thinking, so this is like a kingdom with modern technology? Yes. 
So I would think that, so I'm just, it's hard for me to conceptualize because it's such like a free spirited thing. And it's like, oh, the most important person in the kingdom is going on a road trip. Yeah. But it's like, so I guess they don't have airplanes there or something. Uh, they or... do have, they do have airships, but I think, uh, I know that in the anime, there's like something bad happens. And you know so what? he's hiding. As long as I get to have my gay ships, whatever. There's you know? gonna be gay ships galore. Perfect. I watched I don't care. eleven minutes of like the I watched the first episode of the anime and I was like, yes, this is awesome. There's a lot of room for gay interpretation. There's a lot of room. So, because they're all supposed to be like best friends, and so they like, you know, oh, it's just it's really cute. I thought if you guys want to check it out, there's um the the first episode of the anime is up on YouTube. Oh, I didn't know it was on YouTube. I thought I had to, like, do something weird. No, no. You, they, they're they releasing the episodes on YouTube, so they have the first episode up there. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. So this person in the comments knows more than I do. So Lucis falls, and everyone wants Noctis dead. That's the prince. He has to keep a low profile while traveling to Luna. Oh, okay. So that, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I knew that that was, like, that's the story in the anime, but I wasn't sure how, like... If how much of that was going over to the game. Okay, so they're de also declared to be dead, so that's me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. You know what? I'm sure it would all, you know, not really make sense, but will make sense in Final Fantasy. Oh, fine. Yeah, it, that's just how it is, you know? <laughs> um, uh, we have to do this cool thing for reasons. For reasons, and they all have to dress cool because reasons. Exactly. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of missing, I know everyone was making fun of Final Fantasy for a long time for the overly intricate outfits, and they're trying to tone it down, but... But you kind of miss them. Yeah. I know. I wish they would have toned it down a little less. I, I wish there were still some crop tops. Yeah. You know? I, I'm actually really disappointed that I didn't get a chance to order, like, the, the super special edition, like, pre-order thing. For what? For the for Final Fantasy fifteen, I was too late. They didn't have any left. Shit. I know. It doesn't release until September. Well, Final Fantasy is I know. Is a thing. Well, I'm on the waiting list, so hopefully they'll have more. I'm sure they'll have more. They're, it seems like they're really cashing in on this one. I know. <laughs> well, because there's no, I'm not, like, I'm not one of those people. Like, I cannot go on eBay and spend, like, a thousand dollars to get, like, that's just not. It's never happened. No, yeah. Um, I, I, I really feel like they're cashing in on this, so, yeah. Yeah. With, an, with a tie-in anime and stuff, you know? Oh, definitely. I, well, I think that... I don't know. I'm hoping that that just means that this has, like, a really solid, like, solid characters, you know? I still don't understand why Japan loves Lightning so much. She's in fashion magazines now. It's yeah, like, she, was in, she was in Louis Vuitton ads. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, I guess it's because she's the first female lead in a Final Fantasy game, and, you know, she's bland, so you can just imprint on her, and she has pink hair, so that's cool. Yeah, I mean, she looks cool. Yeah. You know what, she was the only character I liked until they did Lightning Returns, and they're like, we've added boob physics, and they're like, look at her boobs, and I'm like, oh my god, stop, please. You're yeah. making me feel weird. And it was just like, man, you've ruined it. <laughs> I know, exactly. It was so weird. Yeah. Like, everybody else in the game was so whiny and complaining. She was like, okay, let's go. Shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if, oh, and I was also just going to bring up, because I know that some people were hesitant to watch the Stasis LP because they didn't know if it had jump scares in it. Um. It's it's a creepy game, but it does not really have jump scares in it. I think there was one, but it wasn't even that scary. No, I like, mean... Something uh, breaks some glass, and you're like, ah, oh, okay. And, like, and you could trust me on this, because I'm normally, as Mari will tell you, a complete jumpy mess during scary games, and I was totally fine. Oh, um, by the way, I do lower the volume of the screams very low, and... If you're somebody who has who is triggered by screams, I would suggest that 
you don't watch a horror let's play and I would also suggest that uh, you, you take the, the necessary steps for that trigger which would be whatever your doctor uh, prescribes for that mm -hmm. but um, I do lower them very much so that's not that's something I take into consideration when I'm editing I always watch the bar and lower it as much as I can so if the fact that a scream happens upsets you, then I very much suggest that you don't watch Let's Plays of Scary Games. Yeah, I think that's a tough one because it's like, <clears throat> I don't know, watching a Let's Play for a Scary Game and, you know, there's, you know, where it's completely likely that there will be screams in it, you know, that's tough. Yeah, um... Because we will have a reaction of being afraid. Uh, it, it, if that's something that, a, that is a, a, a trigger for you, I, I very much suggest that you consult your doctor about that. And, yeah. and uh, ask them what you should do. And try and avoid Let's Plays of horror games. Yeah. Stasis was creepy as fuck, though. The, I mean, the story just gets, like, really... I don't know. And I kind of liked that they left so much of it to you to, like, discover as you go, mm -hmm. you know? Um, is there I, anything... What? No, go ahead. I, no, I was going to switch to a different topic. I've been playing Final Fantasy X. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It's so... It's like... <laughs> I get why so many Final Fantasy fans didn't like it, but I'm like, oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> That's the one I, with uh, Titus, right? Titus and Lulu, whose dress is just belts. What I think it would happen with Lulu is that she was on this tropical island where everyone wears bright colors and the thongs and stuff, and she was like, no, I want to be emo. I want to be goth. Like, she wanted to be goth, but there was, like, no clothes around that were goth. So just, she just found a bunch of belts and... Killed just an attached animal. them to her body. Yeah, and then she like killed like an animal with black fur, and she's like, "Fine, this is me. I'm goth now." And every and, but like that's all she had. That was black. That's all oh, she you... could find. <laughs> are you playing the remaster? No, I'm not. I'm playing the original PS2 version. Oh yeah, because I was gonna say they do have the remaster on GameFly for the <sighs> PS4. No, I do have the remaster for the PS3. I just didn't want to hook up everything up, you know. Yeah. I just want to play it on my PC. And plus, the original PS2 version has the original music and some other assets mm. that can't be found in the remaster. So it has some yeah. value. Hmm. Uh, and it also has that kind of raw, that raw nostalgia feel where you're like, oh, God, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> I really think that C-Punk is heavily influenced from C-Punk? Yeah, do you know what C-Punk is? It's oh, like God. a style of music and aesthetic where it's kind of, I think somebody described it, I remember seeing a tweet where it was, C-Punk is, is a leather jacket, but instead of studs, it's, it's spiral seashells. Aha. Uh -huh. So, because honestly, when I kept seeing you tweeting about it, I thought you were just mis mixing up the word steampunk. No, no, no. It's C-Punk. You oh, should right. Google it. I think you might actually like it. Yeah, probably. Uh, but if, if anybody was interested in checking out the remaster, uh, if you go to gameflyoffer.com slash geekremix, you can check that out for free. I'm going to put C-Punk on the screen in a second. C-Punk. This is uh, interesting. So it's like, see, we got some crosses with a satanic sign and dolphins mm -hmm. under the ocean so yeah you know I like the whole you've heard of like the mermaid beard trend right I've heard of the glitter beard but I can imagine what mermaid beard looks like oh yeah just no just google image search for mermaid beard it's great I really wish that I could convince Brandon to do some of this, but I know he'd never go for it. Oh, yeah. No, right? Brandon, yeah, Brandon would look nice, but he can't go to work like that. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, here's uh, Pocahontas with a beard. 
Yeah. Oh, here's Ariel with a beard. Oh, this is nice. Put little flowers on his beard. I know, right? Doesn't that look cool? Oh, so. to a man fucking a mermaid. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. A gay mermaids right here. There's nothing <laughs> not safe for work being shown, so I can put this on stream. Are you seeing this? Yeah. See it yeah. in a second. Where is it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> this guy shaved abs into his tummy hair. <laughs> oh, have you read any books lately that we should oh, recommend? Oh, right. Um, I listened to The Hellbound Heart, which is the basis for the movie Hellraiser, which is by Clive Barker. And there is a two versions on Audible. The one that's read by Clive Barker and then another one that's not. I chose the one by Clive Barker just because I want to hear it from what the author wanted to say. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a book for people who... Uh, I, I'm trying to find a way to, to phrase this. It is. It is. It doesn't have a positive... It's a horror book about sex things. So it's not going to be a safe time for things that are sexual. Yeah. I like it, but I am also aware that a lot of people would probably be very upset by it. So uh, if if that's something that you wouldn't like, then definitely don't read this. But Just, I like it yeah. because I like horror and I like things that are a little bit more disturbing. Uh, it's not... There's only one part where I really think people would be really be upset about it in in the way one woman remembers an encounter, but other than that, it's just like straight up like horror. Where you're mm -hmm. like, oh god, this is weird. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lady sitting on a pile of heads, but I feel like that's that's more like, oh, that's weird. So yeah. <laughs> well, you just gotta you know like whenever it comes to we try to give you. Uh, when we read books that have things in them that some people might not want to read, we try to be, like, as upfront about that as possible. But it's also important to, like, if you know that you have certain things that you, like, really don't want to see in a book, then... Yeah, that's why I'm saying it. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, I, th I think it's well-paced. It has pretty interesting characters. Uh... And I like it. I like the lore of it, the way the rules work, quote unquote. Yeah, and yeah. The way the Cenobites are uh, described. But I also realize that's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, and I also have been trying to listen to Fifty Shades of Grey just because I'm curious about, like, I haven't, what is it? I haven't heard any more of it aside from what we listened to in the car. So. It's so weird. Okay, it's simultaneously boring really weird and like I, every time I listen to it I keep making that face I make when I it's like Ugh, uh. mm -hmm. so I'll be like bored and I'll go Ugh, like, Ugh, weird so then I was like okay so this is a, based off of fan fiction I wonder if I just pretended uh, Christian Grey was Sola so then I try to imagine that and I was just like oh god this is still gross and then I was like, I wonder if I'm having a problem because he's a man and she's a woman. So then I pretended they were both women, like Christian Grey was a woman. Yeah. And then I listened to the sex thing. I was like, okay, she's just a woman who, like, uh, it's still weird. And, you know? Yeah. And then I tried to pretend, like, because I'm like, sometimes when I hear something that makes me, like, go, like, ugh, that's sexist, I try to imagine the opposite genders to make sure I'm not just being biased. Yeah, yeah. It's still gross. <laughs> it's still weird. Like, sometimes the sex scenes are like, oh, that's kind of... <laughs> I haven't encountered any uh, uh, defying of of uh, boundaries yet. And so far, he's been pretty adamant about following boundaries. But the contract in the movie and the contract in the book is very different. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, he demands that she sees a trainer four times a week and controls her food. Oh, he does that in the in the movie, too. Oh, I didn't remember. But he does control her food. Yeah. 
he uh, does, this is in yeah. the contract. And then there was some food. Yeah. He uh, does, this is in yeah. the contract. And then there was some other, a bunch of other rules that I felt were, were very crazy. Yeah. And, uh, there was there was a bunch of other rules where I was like, oh, that wasn't mentioned in the movie. I think for the movie they toned it down a lot. The food one was in the movie. Oh, okay. He gives her like a list of foods that she can eat. Okay, yeah, all right. I just remember listening to the list and there was like a lot more really stuff about what she was allowed to do with her life. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I guess he picks out all her clothes in the movie. I guess when I was listening to it, it was just a lot more in depth where I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, and I, okay, so I've known, I've known people who've been in contracts like that and I, I don't really have a problem with it. What I had a problem with in this book slash movie is that this is like her first experience Oh, oh, oh my god. The description of the first time she... Okay. It's so weird. She's like, never masturbated before in her life either. She's never had an orgasm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that's that weird, though. No, 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 no. But what's weird is, is that, like, he's able to make her come so easily. Oh, yeah, that's... Her first orgasm is from him playing with her nipples. Oh my god, come on. That's it that is it come that's on you have to do play with her boobs that's ridiculous so up until then she has she has the one guy the hispanic guy who's in love with her and then there's another guy the reason why in the movie that one guy like grabs her shoulders is because he's interested in, t in her too so she has a hot latino guy after her and a hot uh yale graduate She's like, oh, no, I can't date the boss's brother. He's Every time he's back from Yale, he tries to ask me out, but I say no. And basically, Christian Grey is the very first man she's ever found to even be attractive at all. Mm -hmm. like before that, she's just been not interested in anybody. Yeah. And so I think she like gives he like gives her some sort of awakening or something. And then she like slowly gets addicted to fucking him. And it's, I mean, like, that's, that's kind of okay, I guess. I, 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 whatever, it's a fantasy, but it's still really weird. Like, he says a lot of things where I'm, like, just just cringy, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's, like, I try... On, on the one hand, like, some of it I find to be, like, really cringy and just kind of, like, hey, what's going on with this, you know? I haven't but... seen anything where I just go outright, like, oh, my God, that's so rapey. So far it's been, like... I need your consent. Look at me. Tell me this is what you want. Blah, 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 blah. But but on the other hand, it's like, if it's written, it, this is pretty much a fan fiction. And I, I know I'm not the only one who has enjoyed some pretty fucked up fan fiction. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, I had to read I, a fan fiction where Solus was the evil emperor of the world and kidnaps Seleven. So, Levon, yeah. Levelin is like, you know. And I mean, I've definitely like read romance books where they do things that like if I was if that happened in like you know if it happened in a movie or something I would just be like hey wait a second like that's you know that's not right but it's a fantasy and so it's like okay as so long, long as you, you know it's so fantasy. long as you know it's a fantasy and you know that you're perfectly aware of that so I, I, I'm, I'm still waiting to get to the really weird gross sex stuff because that's the thing that everyone seems to quote, and I'm not there yet, and it's taking forever, where it's just like, do I want to do the thing with the, with the stuff? I'm like, oh my god, just do weird stuff already. Just do the thing with the stuff so we can hear about it already. I know, it's a lot of... He is very controlling over her life, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so I've been reading, or I just finished reading, actually. I listened to I Am Spock which was written by Leonard Nimoy, and he narrates it. Um, it's like, a, it's a quick listen. It's only like four or five hours. Um, it was, it was really good, but it was also just, it was really sad, you know, because he so died last year. Our Audible link is audibletrial.com slash geekremix. And so what was the name of your book? 
I am Spock. And the name of my book is The Telltale Heart, which is the origin story of the movie Hellraiser. Hellraiser is a horror movie that's like loosely based off BDSM, so you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Um, and the book that people are constantly asking me about, about the trans girl princess, is The Bone Dolls Twin. Yeah. I have actually, so, hold on. I, um, so if you, if you Google gay fiction book list that doesn't suck, and again, that's gay fiction book list that doesn't suck, you will actually pull up the first result that comes up is the gay book list that doesn't suck. And it's like this really, really long list of gay fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, all with gay characters. It's like a really, it's a really great list. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested in other stuff that we haven't recommended, that's a really good one. I added a bunch of stuff from that list. It's, it has actually some stuff that we've talked about too. Um, but that's a really good place to look. So if, yeah. Do we have any other cool news this week? Uh, no other news, but did you want to answer a couple questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. As long as they're not really weird and dark. Oh, no, I mean not weird, sorry. Just dark. Yeah. No question is weird. Okay. So, let's see. Somebody had asked us if we had any thoughts about No Man's Sky. What? what okay, it looks super cool. Uh, it looks like a game I would have fun in. Uh procedurally generated planets that seems cool i feel like the hype is pretty high i just wasn't sure like what else is in it It, i think it's supposed to be kind of an mmo but not really like the things you do on a planet stay there for other people when they go on the planet but the the galaxy is super huge and yeah you can have like a, a fighter pilot and things happen I just I'm wasn't not really... sure if there was, like, any sort of a story or if you just kind of, like, run around looking at stuff. I don't know. I don't I don't think there is a story. I think it's just really open world and you're just searching around and touching things. But I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it, it sounds super cool. It looks super cool. But what what is there to do? Yeah. I mean, it, it looks – here's – well, for me, it looks beautiful, but I also – I don't have a I don't have a lot of patience for games that are not um, that don't have a lot of things happening in them, and I think it's because I don't have like a ton of free time to just like wander around aimlessly in games. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that's really just a function of my time. Like I'm sure that if I had like ten or twenty hours a week to play games, that I would be able to enjoy games like that a lot more. Well, you either have no money and lots of time or money and no time. Yeah. Or no money and no time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about right. (laughs) So I just, I don't, I feel like I would always feel like I wasn't, I don't know, getting my time's worth out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, And I like playing things with, that have like a story in it. Uh, Or some sort of connection. Yeah, something going on. Um, somebody was asking, okay, so they said, longtime fan here and a big lover of your Mario Kart playthrough. It's my go-to calming playlist. My question is, will you make any other chill Let's Plays like that? What, what's a chill Let's Play where we just, like, do, do we, what? what? what I'm, chill not, let- I'm not <laughs> sure. It, I mean, with I don't know if they meant, like, where we'd play against each other. Or, oh, I think maybe they mean like a, a let's play where you know we're just we're kind both, of dicking around. Yeah, dicking around, dicking yeah. around. Like the Katamari playlist. Yeah, or we're where we're both have something to do on our hands, so we're just having a conversation or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what they mean. What do you mean? Update us. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. Like maybe where it's like where it's not a story; it's just us bullshitting and playing ah. a game. That might that might make sense. Yeah, I don't know if I've been trying to think if there are other games that I can think of for like where we would both be able to play something like that. Well, we could play Mario Party. Oh, I mean, we did play Mario 
Party, remember? Yeah, but there's other boards, man. I can never find anybody who wants to play Mario Party with me because it's like Monopoly, where <laughs> the games last for like seven years. <laughs> where if you're not winning, it's no fun. Well, Stacy, didn't I'm kidding. you win? I'm kidding! I'm just... I'm like, Mario Party is specifically designed so that anybody can win no matter what. Yeah. And, like, even if you think you're losing or even if you think you're winning, somebody gets the star for, like, losing the most. And you're like, fuck you, <laughs> you know? You need, like, a four-star buffer to make sure you win. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Okay. Oh, this one is for me, but I didn't think about it beforehand. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we know of Mari's weird love of avocados, but do you, Stacy, have something particularly weird that you do by habit? Do you, let's see, what do I do that's weird? Um, I have a lot of... You can't say anything, otherwise you'd be like, it's not weird, Mari, it's normal! Well, okay. you can, no, you can go ahead and say it, and then I'll just argue with you. Um, I can't honestly think of anything. I have a lot of, well, okay... So, to be fair about the avocado thing, I have a lot of foods that are probably really common foods that I've never eaten before. For Wait, you've never even eaten avocado before? No, I've eaten an avocado, but oh. I, like, like, for instance, pickles or tuna fish, stuff like that, that I've uh, just, or like, uh, most sodas I've never had before. You're not missing out on, I mean, I like sodas, but it's not like you're missing yeah. anything. But I, I feel like I'm just one of those people that, like, uh, I have, like, some weird food hang-ups. Uh, I would never it's... force you on this, but I really feel like if you actually took a bite of a pickle, you would like it. Maybe someday. Oh, I've never been stung by a bee. Also. Stacy thinks there's a magical power that is stopping her <laughs> from being stung by a bee. Like a it's... magical universe power. It's true. Well, it's not. It's a magical universe power because my body knows that it's allergic to bees, and so if I ever get stung, I'm gonna die. You eat cucumbers, right? Yes. Is it the brine that you don't like about pickles? Yeah, it's the smell. Ah, uh, but you love cheese, man. Stacy loves cheese. I do love cheese. I love cheese so much. Um, let's see what else. All right, how do I stop talking to someone online without being an asshole? I just don't get along with some people, and I don't know how to say it without being rude. Uh, don't talk to them anymore. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I feel like people ask questions like that. Um, what do you, I, I guess it really depends on what they're trying to say. Like, if somebody's constantly trying to, like, like... is somebody stalking you, or is this just, like, you feel like you have to put some sort of closure on it, and you don't know how? Uh, I was Either, friends I, with somebody yeah. for a long time, and then he was just becoming a bigger and bigger douche until I was like, wait a second, this guy's an asshole. And I said, hey, like, you know, treat me better, or I'm not gonna hang out with you anymore. And he was like, do you know how sometimes when people are assholes, they'll try and twist it around on you, like you're an abusive person or something? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, when you're ready to not be such an asshole anymore, uh, go ahead and talk to me. And then I just didn't talk to him yeah, ever again. And then one time I did when I thought he was ready to not be an asshole, and then he started being an asshole. And I was like, well, bye then. Because you don't need to be worried. Yeah. If, when somebody is an asshole... They probably know they're being an asshole. They just don't want to admit it. Um, or they're just like, whatever. You, you don't need to be friends with somebody who's an asshole is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, there's been there's been times before where I just mute it. Like, if it's on Twitter, like, I'll just mute somebody. Oh, I mute people all the time. Yeah. Constantly. It, if they just, you know... Sometimes you just, like, you, you just can't deal with it, and, you know. You don't need to spend, okay, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, you need to have, like, a diversity of opinions, about, and, like, that is important. It's important to have a diversity of opinions and stuff in uh, your life and everything. But at the same time, there's only so much energy human beings have for themselves, and it shouldn't be wasted on things like somebody yelling at you on Twitter, you know, yeah. 
or well, somebody saying something shitty on Twitter that makes you feel shitty, and it's like, you know what? I don't need to uh, hear this because I have people in real life that I need to be hanging out with, and I have a job, and I have other things to do, and spending it on trying to listen to somebody who makes me feel shitty on the internet is not one of those things that I need to be doing. Well, so. and there's also, there's a difference between somebody who has a difference in opinion and somebody who belligerently wants you, wants to convince you to believe how they do. Um, my husband and I actually have very different opinions on some things, but we're respectful with each other when we talk about those things. Like, we still fight about them sometimes, but the the thing is, is that when you're talking to, like, um, say, anonymous people on the internet who have different opinions than you, sometimes they can get very forceful about wanting you to change your mind, whereas, you know, if you have a respectful relationship with somebody, then they can just view it as, like, oh, okay, we'll discuss it for a little while, and then we'll just be like, okay, well, agree to disagree, you know? Exactly. And if somebody can't respect your different opinion then you don't you don't there's no reason that you have to put up with them you know they don't have to be the person that you keep around to just like prove that you can listen to different opinions you know sometimes it's worth your sanity to just be like hey this person brings me more headaches than not or if somebody just puts some like random ass like Sometimes people are just say, like, something stupid, and I'm just like, I'm not going to deal with you. The mm -hmm. end. Bye. Like, <laughs> you don't have to deal. You don't have to deal with every single person you interact with on the Internet. You know, like, just just ignore them. Like, yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing rude about ignoring some people, you know? Yeah. You don't owe anybody your time. Like, um, there's... If you were in real life and somebody at your workplace came up and talked to you and you just, like, didn't respond, that would be rude. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, people were also asking us to talk about the oxen free update. Uh, I don't know if it's worth doing, a, like, a re-let's play of that, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, I, I, I know that we say this a lot, but I feel like people really forget that Stacy and I, unlike other channels where... They can just get up in the morning and record a video, and it can be up that day. Stacy and I have to, like, coordinate our lives. And we have spouses who complain about us, like, taking up space in the house and being like, you have to be quiet from this time to this time. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, you know, it's a two-person channel, so there are definitely some more... And we don't... We're not, like, roommates, so there yeah, is we some, don't, like logistical difficulties that come along with that, you know? And Stacy lives an hour away from me, so I have to go drive to her, pick her up, and take her back to my house so that we can record in the sound studio that is to actually just a room in my house. No, it's home. a sound studio, Mari. <laughs> it's very professional. Yes, it's a professional sound studio that's definitely not just a room in my house where I taped foam to the walls. Uh, with expert duct tape expert duct tape where okay so it's like you know it's not going to be we can't we can't just do that you know we have to pick a game that's going to be the most efficient with our time possible where we can't play things like fallout and like do a highly edited thing where we play for three hours and edit it down to the highlights for 15 minutes because then you would have one video a week yeah you know Oh, you know, it's funny that you started talking about this because that was actually the subject of the next question, which was, are there some game mechanics that make a game best or you like better or worse to make a Let's Play out of? Well, it really depends on what kind of challenge you have because, you know, people like Dragust and Weasel Zone, they can play a game for a few hours and give you the highlights and they can, like, build a, a thing, like a, a fuck machine or something and be like, look, I made a fuck machine. And that's pretty cool. But for... For well, I think, us, they, I think they mean, like, for us. Like, if people were going to oh, recommend us stuff, like, what uh, do we look for? If people want to recommend us stuff, in my opinion, Stacey can have a different opinion, is that it has not a lot of filler gameplay, as in, like, in Fallout, where it'll be like, 
here is an interesting thing. Now walk for 30 minutes in that direction, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or our best, uh, are we are at our best and we have a story that we can think about and characters we can interpret. Yes. And judgmental about. Yeah. Uh, a game that is just, visual novels are okay, but not visual novels that are just a book. Yeah, or like with, with nothing happening or... It, you, when you guys ask us to do a visual novel, you're basically asking us to have a sore throat for two days after we record that, so please keep that in mind. Uh, because that's a lot of talking at once, and it hurts after a while. I mean, I think it's fine to, like, play them for a little bit, but we've also, I feel like, at least for me, we've played a lot of visual novels at this point, so my expectations of them are a little higher than they used to be. Yeah, if you're going to suggest a visual novel, please suggest one that has a lot of stuff happening, you know, and yeah. one that isn't really long. Like, if you suggest Persona, that's not something that we can do because Persona is 80 hours long and has a lot of filler and also you have to read everything. Yeah. That's pain. That would be causing us physical pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? I like things with... I like things with a strong story or characters um, because then there's just, there's more things for us to talk about. I think uh, the gameplay, the game can be beautiful and the gameplay can be exciting, but there, but if there's nothing for us to really talk about, then, you know, What's the point? what are we going to say about it? Um, I feel like people will ask us to play games that are like, it's a great game and it's really pretty, but what are we going to say, you know? Exactly. Like, people, like when people asked us to play No Man's Sky and we were both just like, I don't know what we would talk about, though, you know? Exactly. What, what, would, we, what would we say? And yeah. here is a dinosaur. <laughs> I guess we could, like, look up dinosaur facts and space facts. Actually, that would be kind of interesting if we both well, just read a bunch of facts about space. Yeah, well, that would be a fun thing to do for, like... Yeah, if we really researched stuff. And if we just people... did one day of No Man's Sky where we just, like, looked around, and that would end up being, like, ten episodes or yeah, something. Yeah, I feel like we could do that. Yeah, we could just, like, look up... We can watch some documentaries about space, and then... <laughs> oh, dude, what is it? It's called, um... The one with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Cosmos? Yeah. I loved Cosmos. Anyways... But, I mean, remember when we were doing Fallout 4 and, like, I came with that whole giant page, like, all of those notes that I had, and, like, that's what it took to make that game interesting? Yeah, we literally had to As a Let's Play. For yeah. Fallout? Yeah. Yeah, we had a whole page of notes, and then we had to, like, think of jokes before we did things, which is something we never do. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a lot of work, and, uh... Like, literally other, every other channel was doing Fallout as well. It's just, I had to uh, play the game ahead of time and plan out routes in my head of what we were going to do so yeah. as to make our time most efficient. Because Stacey and I don't see each other very much, so Fallout, we can't just play all day and then edit it down. I had to, like, plan out routes in my head, like, okay, and then we're going to go from here to here. Oh, shit, there was a bug, now it doesn't work, and we can go over here, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was, it was... And also the story in Fallout 4, it wasn't good. It wasn't the end. Find your baby or who, whatever. Shut up, Sean. Who cares? Like, come on. Yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I just, I felt like it wasn't, it just wasn't what we were looking for. Um, oh, the uh, release date for Dishonored 2 has been um, announced. Cool. It, it's going to be uh, November, November 11th, so, I don't know, did you ever play the first one? No. No. Seemed like, like, uh, like that. <laughs> it just, it didn't seem special to me at all. Mm. No. You play it, you play as a female lead character in the second one. Hmm. So, I don't know. I watched, um, I watched Cry play a lot of it, so 
Oh, was it cool? You know, I do, I didn't get to the end of it, so I couldn't really tell you, like, what the jumping off point for the next story would be, but, um, I think it could be interesting. Well, ha I'll have to see. So, anyways, that's about all I had for today. Woo, is there, podcast. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Nope. All right. Wait. What? Someone just asked, how often do people make references to Stacy's mom by Fountains of Wayne, Stacy? How often? A lot. Uh, Stacy really likes it when people do that, so whenever you leave a comment that or talk to Stacy on Twitter, uh, you should reference that song and send sure. her links to the music video. Whenever All people make comments about it, I just block them. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's just an, it's just an instant way to get yourself blocked because I just I don't I don't feel the need to put up with it anymore. So the, the screen goes red, and then she wakes up three hours later, and she has to call me up. It happened again. It happened again. <laughs> Mari, I don't know what I've done. I'm covered in blood. I don't know if it's mine or or somebody else's. I don't see a body. Help me! <laughs> All I heard was someone singing the lyrics and then just it went red and now I'm here. <laughs> so. Uh oh, someone said Stacy's mom. Hold on. <laughs> we, I gotta ban them. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, I think that that was, uh,. I think that's They've all for banned. me. Good part. Good way. Good. Oh, shit. There he goes. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, bye, guys. I will be back in a few minutes uh, after I have a snack and pee to stream Final Fantasy X. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.